What's up, YouTube? It's Biblical Truther. I have a couple things I want to discuss. It's been a while since I've made a video for the simple fact that after my last video, I was hit with two strikes over three days from some very old videos, one of which was uh, about the two females, I think they were, who were um, said to be um, possessed. And they were asking them questions about what had started in, you know, 2020, the whole ordeal for the last two years that may be getting ready to ramp up again as, uh, you know, um, the company has now been able to get that, um, uh, genetic manipulator into a childhood regimen, if you get my drift. But anyway, I want to preface this because apparently with my last few videos, people are getting the impression that I'm moving away from Jesus Christ. And I want to say right off the bat that I am not. However, uh, I am finding many, many things and being led and shown many, many things that are somewhat intermingled with Christianity. However, Christianity uh, seems to be, uh, churchianity is more proper term for it. Uh, seems to be so watered down nowadays that the spirituality has pretty much left it. You know, you can't find true spiritual people in church anymore. Um, and it's sad because these people are so hypocritical, so materialistic. Uh, and I'm sure I'm going to trigger some people with what I'm fixing to discuss because it flies in the face of a lot of uh, a lot of belief systems that's been given to us, not something that we've come to our own conclusions with, but other people's teachings and other people's conclusions. You know, I like to listen to many people's ideas and um, um, what else would you call it? Uh, ideology, I guess. Um, just to see where I'm at in my walk, in my path. But the first thing I want to talk about is the body of Christ, because uh, I mentioned in a video a while back when I was talking about Jesus when he was telling his or telling the Pharisees, uh, "Does your does not your scripture say ye are gods?" And a lot of people nowadays, especially in the quote unquote New Age. Um, have this this mentality that they are you know gods in the flesh you know where where um, little g gods if you will well if you believe that Jesus Christ was the Creator you know God in the flesh uh, and you consider yourself the body of Christ are you not saying uh, that you are God? Because a lot of people, especially with the uh, the new spirituality that's coming about, it seems uh, that people are equating themselves with God. Well, that's exactly what the Christians do. If you say you're in, you know, you are the body of Christ or part of the body of Christ, it doesn't matter if you're just a uh, cell uh, in the toenail of Christ. You are. Um, you are God. If you, if you consider him the creator, then you are a creator, a co-creator, I should say, not the creator, but a co-creator with him. So I see a lot of attacks from Christians mainly uh, on people who have this mentality that they are co-creators uh, with God. But aren't those same Christians who are the body of Christ saying the exact same thing, just in a different way? my understanding and my thought process is absolutely you're both saying the same thing so why are you attacking each other it's just crazy how, how successful they have been at the divide and conquer um, but one of the dividing and conquering things is what I had put uh, I think I put it in a video a while back uh, it may have been my last one I don't know it's been so long but Israel Israel, or you can say Israel, if you want to break it up in it, in its, you know, uh, whatever it's called, I forget right now. Um, but it stands for Isis, Ra, and El Yon, or Elohim, or El, just simply El. Uh, but what I want to say about this, and this is where most people are going to be triggered, 
is that whether you want to believe it or not, the story given to us about Christ uh, in the Bible mirrors Quetzalcoatl, mirrors Osiris and Horus story, mirrors, uh, there was one other one I had and I can't remember it right now, but they all were basically telling the same story uh, in that uh, basically sun worship, sun, sun god worship. And uh, if you don't believe me, look up the name Antonio Piso, P-E-S-O. It's There is uh, documentation out there that says him and a couple of his family members, just a handful of them, actually wrote the New Testament. Uh, if you look on, and I know this is controversial for some people, you know, the cognitive dissonance thing, um, but Wikipedia about this particular person and family says that he has many, many, many aliases, one of which is Flavius Josephus, who wrote Antiquities of the Jews, no less. Um, but there's more than that. Other other writers, I think uh, Tacitus, or it, I think it was Tacitus, uh, was one of his aliases, and there were, there were many others, too. Uh, I think he had in, in, you know, double digits of aliases. But anyway, I don't want to get too far into that. That's something you can look up on your own. Uh, Antonio Piso, I think, was his first. And, uh, I know his last name is Piso, P-E-S-O. But he was heavily tied to uh, Rome back in the day uh, and the government thereof. But back to Israel, or Israel, uh, in association with the story of Osiris, where he was cut up into what was it 13 pieces 14 pieces I forget I don't pay too much attention to that stuff but I do see the correlations here uh, but it's the same thing that was done with Christianity and Christ's true teachings because I 100% there was a man that came here who had the title of Christ and was trying to bring us back to original spirituality and uh just as Osiris was cut up and spread across the world, so was the true spirituality was cut up into all these different religions and basically spread across the world. Uh, so I see a parallel in the story of true spirituality, uh, especially what Paul was talking about more so than anyone else in the New Testament. But um, it, was, it was just chopped up. That's why I say there's so much truth in all religions, from Islam to Catholicism to Christianity to uh, Mormonism, uh, even the Gnostic texts, I mean, there's truth in all of them, Hinduism, Buddhism, uh, it's like they took Christ and chopped him up in the, however many main denominations we have now, uh, and just watered what we were supposed to be in this world down, and I've made some statements in past videos that when the Bible says God created man in his own image, that's not just the physicality image. I'm talking about family image from a, you know, a father, a mother, a son, a daughter. That's why I believe the Tetragrammaton has four Hebrew characters rather than three because he was not a triune God. He was actually, uh, what would you say? How would you, how would you term that in a a fancy term, you know, quad, quad yun God, maybe, I don't know, four, you know, there was four aspects, there was a mother, a father, a son, and a daughter, and I've mentioned about the daughter in the past, and I'm still doing some research on that, so I'm not gonna get too far into that, but on the same sense of him basically structuring us, not just physically, but family orientated, you know, uh, we are the same way, we are, we, we are, sons and daughters to start with, then we become mothers and fathers, and then so forth and so on. But what, why I bring that up is, I made a comment in a video or two ago that I'm coming to the understanding that the true creator did not put us here for his own worship. No matter what you think that the Bible says, you know, that you're supposed to fear him and bow your knee and, and basically be a servant because I showed you how in Genesis 2 the word till the ground means to enslave uh, so I'm to the point now where I do not believe that the God of the Old Testament is the one true creator I do not think so um, and 
I'm sure that will trigger some people, but hear me out. If you're the father of all beings and you call them your children, just as we have children, are you going to make your child bend the knee, bow the head, and worship you? So why would you expect that God would have the same mentality if he's our father and it clearly states, you know, that we are his sons and daughters, um, then why would he want worship from us? I think he just wants love from us. He wants us to come here and, and experience whatever we got to experience to be that prodigal son, to learn our lessons, what's, what's right and wrong, and just choose good perpetually and be that prodigal son that comes home and he will welcome us into uh, heaven, you know, back home where we're from, uh, because this is not our home by any stretch of the imagination. But at the same time, uh, it's a beautiful place, but it's hard. Life is hard here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so think about that. Would you make your child bow down and worship you? Do you want your child being scared of you? Do you or do you want your child to love you and maybe admire you? Uh, look up to you be that role model you know that's what every parent wants to be not every parent is successful uh, me included but at the same time if God is our father why would he make us just to strictly worship him and be servants to him you know what I'm saying I'm I'm, I'm coming to a different understanding of the true infinite creator the the source of all things and there's that other trigger word that i've seen many a christians um basically belittle someone for saying the source you know because a lot of new agers and, and especially all these people in the alien agenda and whatnot they all talk about source and whatnot well technically he is the source so whether you call him father whether you call him the god the creator of all things he is the source of all things so why attack someone when they say you know you're trying to make it back to source because that's exactly what we're doing every one of us here in this world is trying to be a prodigal son or daughter uh sorry about that Let me put this on because that thing goes off even when I'm parked. But anyway, I wanted to bring this up to you guys to kind of help clear the air, uh, de-muddy the water, uh, kind of filter some of this out and let us, uh, even though we've been trained to think that unity is of the devil, you know, the whole globalism thing and whatnot, well, there is a them and there is a us us needs that unity them needs their unity for power and worship and, and oppression and slavery whereas we need that unity for lifting up each other for love for power to to be able to withstand the wiles of the devil you know uh, <laughs> i think that's ephesians 6 you know um Put on the breastplate of righteousness, you know, all those things. Uh, we need that. We need that uh, through unity is the only way it's going to come. And I made a video a couple years ago, I think it was on my old channel, uh, about our emotions is the greatest weapon the devil has. And the brainwashing that we suffer here, if we can't back up and look at the bigger picture and see all the correlations through all these different religions rather than hating each other because of a religion that we were basically force fed because of our um, uh, geographic locations because everyone in America who is a Christian had you grown up in Saudi Arabia you'd be a Muslim if you grew up in India you'd be a Buddhist or a Hindu you know what I'm saying like we're all victims in this world through geography. In my opinion, in my understanding, my overstanding, my understanding, whatever all these new terms that are coming about here lately, um, 
But yeah, think about that. If you are the body of Christ, then you are co-creator. You are a co-creator with God. Just as I said with the, the whole cell and the toenail, you know, you could be that one cell in the toenail, but if you're not there, that creates a weak spot. You know what I'm saying? That's a weak spot in the toenail and something that falls on your foot could have been, uh, could have been deflected by that one cell, uh, giving that unity, that strength, you know, pulling those both sides together, but instead it wasn't there and it, you know, cut your toe off. Now you're, uh, now you're pretty damaged, but just like I was telling my wife about this last night, I said, you know, this world is a beautiful place, but it's full of death and vile things. You know, this is not our home. We do not belong here. Although it looks very beautiful sometimes. Uh, I said, every rose has its thorns. So you grasp this world with one hand and you get pricked with the thorn on one hand and then you yank it back and then you try and grab hold of this world again with the other hand and now you have pierced. You have crucified yourself trying to hang on to this world. But we are not meant to be in this world. Uh, maybe for a short time or probably don't seem all that short to us, but uh, we're here to learn some things. And adhering to one uh, denomination or another is not the way, in my opinion. And again, this is all my opinion. Uh, but I do 100% believe in Jesus Christ. Maybe not in the physical person that we've been fed, but there was a man who came in that time frame uh, who had all the attributes of Jesus Christ. So... I'm definitely not saying he didn't walk this earth. That is not what I'm getting at. And if you make it this far in the video, uh, then that should answer your comment if that's what you're going to you know, put. Because I've gotten that on several videos uh, of recent, you know, the last few videos. Um, and what about the miracles? See, we have a power here. And that power is given through Christ, granted. But even in the Bible, and you can go read every incident that happened when he is said to be going around doing all these miracles, Christ himself, out of his own mouth, told every person that he didn't do anything for him. He didn't do that miracle. Go read your Bible. He says, your faith made you whole. You have the power. Because you believed in him, yes. But it was your belief. He didn't do nothing for you. He gave you a new way of thinking. Gave you a, a, maybe a, a focal point. But you did that. So I just wanted to bring that up. I know that might trigger some people as well. But this is my path that I'm on. And... Uh, you can kind of go through and watch my videos as the little evolution, so to speak, has, has been uh, progressive, progressing uh, to get to this spot. But think about it. If you're a father or a mother, are you going to make your kids bow down and worship you? Are you going to make them your slave servants like the Bible says that Adam and Eve were to be? <laughs> uh, it's crazy, man. Spelling, spells. That's why Jesus said, beware the scribes. Beware the scribes. I said it in probably every video I've ever made. Beware the scribes. So he don't want you finding him through a book. He wants you finding him through you, through your heart, a personal relationship with him. Nobody needs the Bible. Nobody needs a preacher in the pulpit who are giving you this watered down version because I think it's, I should have looked it up before I started this video, but uh, I think it's Second Peter, uh, might be third, I don't remember, 
but it was one of those books. It was either Peter or John, one of the last of the, uh, you know, the first, second, and third Peter. I want to say it was Peter, though, third. Uh, I think it was, anyway. He tells you to beware of Paul's writings, that these concepts take way deeper thought than what you've read previous. So just to be aware of that, that these are deep things that Paul talks about. But as you notice, there's been a lot of attacks on Paul's writings over the last probably two years or whatever. Uh, now he's, a, you know, he does have, you know, more Gnostic overtone than anything. Uh, but I've heard many of people trying to preach against Paul. But Paul's where it's at. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Aside from John, the other three didn't even write the books that their name's on. But, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. It's crazy. The more you look into these things, I guess you need to have the inner standing. Not, not this surface standing, you know, this, this just... I don't even know. It's disheartening at this point just to watch the uh, degradation of what used to be Christianity into whatever it's becoming. Because like I've said before, when this uh, changing of the guard happens, it's going to be conservative Christians who are going to be instituting the Noahide uh, laws. Anyway, just some food for thought, some things to think about. And uh, let me know in the comment sections what you think. Am I way off base or is something resonating with you that I've said? Love you guys. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints.